LBT, Jesse504 here, bringing you uh, your week 5 feature match. Sorry it's a couple days late, but better late than never, right? Um, so, this week only got the set from one side, but the match is Master Riolu versus Fujiki, and it is a great match, uh, really entertaining to watch. Um, I watched it a little bit ago, but I don't remember everything, so some of my reactions will be fresh, some of them will not, but, yeah, so Fujiki's team has Mega Kangaskhan, Lugia, Clefable, Magnazone, Tangrowth, Alolan, Muck, Hitmontop, Garchomp, Chandelure, Greninja with Protean, and Vaporeon, and Master Riolu's team has... Mega Mawile, Melmetal, Blaziken, Alolan Ninetales, Diggersby, Blissey, Beware, Naganadel, Slowbro, Uxie, and Fortress. So they're both two really threatening teams. Obviously Blaziken on the one side with Master Riolu, he can speed past that Blaziken to a lot. Um, he's been doing it a lot to his Ninetales, which I find pretty interesting. But if that thing gets going to have enough boosts you can pass to like Mawile or Melmetal, and with enough boosts, they'll be able to outspeed something. And I also like if, uh, like, Naganadel passing to that thing could just be crazy. But let's see the team that I do have this week, uh, which is Fujiki's team. And um, so bringing that one Uber, the Lugia, who I think this is, was the first game that it came all season, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but... Does pretty solid work against Master Riolu's team with Calm Mind, Roost, Earth Power, and Psyshock. His team is fairly weak to Ground and Psychic, which I really respect bringing that set. That just really does so much against his team. Additionally, a lot of physical threats, the only real special threat being the Naganadel, and then I guess the Slowbro if that thing wants to get set up and attacking. But oftentimes that's just there to be a wall. So this Lugia can sort of break that, especially if it gets some Calm Minds up, which also will um, let it be more durable, especially against like the few special threats that are there. But you didn't really need too much to do that. Um, brings Leftovers on it. I could consider bringing Heavy Duty Boots on it, but his rocks aren't that solid. So I understand why it didn't. Um, up next, Scarf Chandelure. Very consistent Mon. Shadow Ball, Energy Ball, Flamethrower, and Psychic. Just does a lot every week. Um, I don't think some of the moves were too necessary. I think you could have gotten away with not running Energy Ball and uh, instead running like Trick or something to sort of, if you give the Melmetal a choice scarf, it's still not outspeeding much. And you get rid of that thing's potential choice Band or Assault Vest, which could both be pretty problematic. Um, additionally, uh, if you gave Blissey a scarf, that could be pretty good because otherwise that thing can kind of wall this. Same with Slowbro. And you don't need Energy Ball to hit the Slowbro because uh, uh, Shadow Ball hits it for more. And uh, I guess you could argue maybe wanting uh, Energy Ball for the Diggersby. But A, I don't see that coming too often. And B, you can still hit it really hard with Flamethrower because it is not a resisted hit. So it'll still do a lot. And Diggersby isn't the known for it, like its bulk. So I possibly could have seen that. Um... Clefable, Light Clay, I really like that Light Clay Clefable this week with Magic Guard, um, Bold. Uh, again, clearly very well-built team uh, identified that physical attackers are the real threats and sort of built for those. Reflect, Flamethrower, uh, Light Screen, and Moonblast. Um, yeah, Fire is another big weakness on Master Riolu's team because Mons like Melmetal and Mega Mawile, neither of them like getting hit by Fire moves. And there isn't really too good of a fire switch in for that team. It's not like they have like a flash fire or a um, flame, um, flash fire or f I don't know what the other fire immunability is off the top of my head. Um, if there is one, but yeah. Um, not having one of those means that Clefable can kind of just do a lot more. And additionally, setting screens is always really helpful for this team, especially uh, when you have those scary mons like Naganadel, um, Melmetal, and Mega Mawile. Setting screens does wonders against those. Um, Greninja this week, very, uh, I really like this set. Spikes, Low Kick, Scald, Gunk Shot. Spikes are really nice here to sort of chip down the uh, other team when they have some mons that are pretty resilient against rocks. Um, the spiker can really just do a lot there. 
scald, um, just solid stab and then gunk shot. Um, I guess you don't really need to pack stab on Protein Greninja, but gunk shot is really nice to be able to, or low kick's great for the Blissey, which um, otherwise could have been walled, um, or could have been a wall for this thing with special. And then gunk shot is here for, I'm just assuming the Ninetales. Um, I don't really know why it was necessary, but yeah, it's fine, Bring. Uh, transforming into poison for defense is pretty solid as well. And then him on top, very bulky. Him on top with Choice Band. Um, I think it does a lot. CC, EQ, Facade, and Mach Punch. You gotta be aware of the status against Master Riolu's team. So I like Facade there. And then CC and uh, CC's great always. EQ, again, kind of a ground weakness. And Mach Punch, the priority is really solid. And then lastly, Kangaskhan. Assuming came here because that seismic toss with the Kangaskhan um, could have been scary. Uh, however, I kind of allowed it in the Ubers League just because it, while does like flat 200 to a lot of things, Mega Kangaskhan can do more in other cases, and I've just seen it be allowed in other leagues, which is kind of why I allowed it, but yeah. So that's the team that I have, and now I can bring you guys the battle. Okay, so we see this battle, and uh, at lead matchup, I think what I would personally lead would be, um, if I was Fujiki, I think that a Scar Chandelure lead is pretty solid. Nothing on the team wants to take hits from that, other than the Blissey. And uh, from Riolu's side, um, I don't know, they, neither team has like a real designated lead, which makes the lead matchup hard to call. I could see a... Nine tails lead to try to set Veil early, but let's see how correct I am. So we see the Nine Tails lead, and we see the Chandelure lead. So it looks like I was able to read that pretty well. Um, immediately switches out into Blissey, which was the very safe play. Flamethrower crit burn, which is very unfortunate, but Blissey would rather be burned than toxic. So it might be pretty solid just for it to be that way rather than a more crippling status. And then soft boiled back up. Now Mega Kangaskhan here. Um, I would see Blissey as fodder if this Mega Kangaskhan wanted to set up, but does not. He just Mega evolves and goes for a fake out, which doesn't really do a lot to the Mel Metal. Um, yeah, and now Mel Metal is a threat. I would consider switching out maybe into the Hitmon top. But just going for the seismic toss is pretty solid as well, just getting good damage on it. However, with Mel Metal's high base HP stat, uh, just able to take out the Kangaskhan pretty early on. Um, I don't know. Um, now pulls a double, which I think was really interesting. Um, into the Blissey, which was an amazing read by uh, Fujiki's part, just knowing what to do. And then now the Slowbro has to come in. Um, as you see, see, not doing too, too much to it, but able to get a good chunk out of it. Um, Greninja comes out, Scald, doesn't do a lot. And now, Blissey comes out, obviously fearing the, um, potential Dark Pulse, but showing Spikes, which was really solid, getting solid damage off. Then low kick, while Blissey I don't think weighs too much if I remember correctly, it still has paper thin physical defense. Missing the toxic sucks, 90% accurate move. Um, if that hit, I'm not sure how different the game would be, but could have been better. Um, low kicks the slow bro, not doing too much. Um, sort of getting chipped away at. Going out into the Lugia now. Uh, this thing doesn't have a great way to touch slow bro, which... It's kind of annoying uh, for Fujiki, but you can kind of just set up Calm Minds pretty safely. I don't know if this thing's packing Toxic. It's packing Ice Beam, which gets the Freeze, which is big, because now, like, the Lugia is potential just fodder. So it comes into Ganadel, which uh, I assume is just a nasty plot set to be able to take advantage of that. Um, just kind of the nature of it being fodder. Getting the Draco Meteor, not doing a lot. Shows a wider Draco Meteor set, able to thaw relatively quickly and take out the Naganadel, which I find pretty, pretty big. Um, yeah. Uh, then here comes the Blaziken. I'm not really sure what it does to a Lugia. Uh, just protect. I assume it wants to pass speed. 
Um, but now the Lugia has multi-scale intact again. Um, so you could pass plus one here, but going for the Flare Blitz, I think that this Blaziken could again taken out by a Psy Shock, um, because it is stabbed, but I assume some kind of read into the Melmetal may be, but I don't really know. Protecting up again, getting up even more speed as a Roost comes out. Um, and now the speed is... So now Blaziken's effectively dead because there isn't any hazard removal, and there's a layer of spikes up. So, Earth powers the Nine Tails, which ends up going for a, or that was the Baton Pass turn. I could see the Nine Tails just going for a mean Blizzard if it wanted to, but it just sets Aurora Veil, sort of so it can capitalize on its speed. But, um, missing Hypnosis is kind of unfortunate, but it is 60% accuracy, so you have to kind of almost doubt if it's going to miss every turn. It's kind of iffy. Um, going out into Clefable, I assume because you just don't want the Lugia to go to sleep. Um, but putting the Clefable to sleep, I'm not really sure how much that's going to end up impacting the game. And then this Clefable, if it wakes up and outspeeds the Melmetal, it can kill it with Flamethrower from this range. If it does not, um, you're just switching out into the hip on top. So that's pretty solid. just don't want anything bad to happen. But still, Melmetal is just such a beast that even at minus one, that's a clean Oko. Um, and then Lugia can come back out, threaten with Earth Powers, but because of um, multi-scale, it won't take as much from the double Iron Bash, and it's able to just KO the Melmetal with Earth Power, which is pretty solid, pretty consistent. And at this point, it's kind of almost just close to the end of the game here. You don't really know if anything can sort of... I don't know how they beat the Chandelure at this point, to be honest. Um, I think you, have to, you would have to speed pass a lot of speed into the Slowbro, I think, to win at this point. But I don't know how that takes out a Lugia. So, in comes the Slowbro. Sort of just to do good damage, I assume. Waking up finally took long enough, setting light screen so that now, even with the Slowbro doing mean damage off a of Scald, can switch out into Greninja, threaten out with Dark Pulse, and then just do a lot of damage back. Here comes the Blissey. I assume this could be a pretty easy read. Just going for Gunk Shot, which is fairly consistent damage on everything on the team. Getting the Poison, too, means that now you can safely low kick for the KO, um, but I don't think the poison ends up mattering too much, especially because of natural cure. Here comes the slow bro. You could uh, just low kick again, which um, ends up not doing too much, but in comes the Clefable again, just to sponge a hit. As the slow bro goes for slack off, so this could just be a stall fest if something goes poorly, but Slowbro Scalds, not doing a lot. Sort of just, I think, Fujiki wants to get ready to set up the second round of screens. Confuses, messes up the nature, is kind of unfortunate, but at the same time, just accidentally making the wrong there. It didn't end up affecting anything, which was pretty lucky. As the Slowbro goes back to 100. So, at this point, kind of need the Chandelure to break the Slowbro. Otherwise, this thing kind of just ease hits, but I don't know how consistently uh, the Chandelure could switch in. Um, I assume just fishing for a special attack drop to try to get, hit through that. Um, to make sure that Chandelure can come in safely, you got it right there. As it slacks off, and then now Chandelure comes in pretty ready to win. Um, slacking off again, and then just going for Energy Ball which does a clean 33%. I think Shadow Ball would have KO'd then by that amount of damage because it is also Stab. Goes out into the Blaziken for just a sack. Um, I think just to try to get more health back on the Slowbros through Regenerator. Um, I assume you would want to switch out again, potentially, into the Ninetales as a sacrifice, but no, it just looks pretty clean here because Ninetales... Um, We'll be able to 
Dot of the energy ball, and then at this point, the Blissey kind of just doesn't have a way to, because it's kind of low as well, dies eventually to the hail. So that ends up being a clean 4-0. Chandelure was able to sweep. Um, I imagine actually going for energy ball, right play in hindsight, because the Blissey could have been a problem if you had went for uh, Shadow Ball. You would have to switch out at some point, but still... Very solid early game by both sides, and then Fujiki was just able to identify the win con and abuse it to win. So, uh, great match, guys, and uh, until next time, Jesse504.